<laughs> All right, good evening, everybody. I'll call this regular meeting to order for September the 17th, 2024. Resolve the agenda for the Resolve the agenda for the September 17th, 2024 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Three, result the minutes of the September 3rd, 2024 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Powell, Boychuk. seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Any errors or corrections, submissions? All in favor? It's carried. Moving down to communications 6, 6.1. <clears throat> Resolved the letter from Manitoba Consumer Protection and Government Services dated September the 5th, 2024, regarding Canada Community Building Fund which is the CCBF allocations, the five-year period, 2024 to 28, be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Any discussion on that? Pretty straightforward. All in favor? It's carried. 6.2. Whereas the Swan Valley Crisis Center has requested a letter of support from the Town of Swan River with regards uh, to a FCM planning study grant for the establishment of a new transitional housing unit in Swan River. We have therefore resolved the letter of support drafted to the Swan Valley Crisis Center be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Any discussion? Councillor Medwood. I have a couple points. First one being is I'm a little confused by the letter being written because it's addressed to the Swan Valley Crisis Center. However, it starts off in the first paragraph stating everything they would already know since they are the ones who submitted an application um, for the grant and funding. So I'm a little confused by that first paragraph. It's an introductory paragraph stating the premise of the remainder of the letter. I, I understand that, but it's addressed to the Swan Valley Crisis Center and it's being spoken. It says the Swan Valley Crisis Center has submitted an application. They're aware of that. They submitted it. It is to them. We're not, we're not giving it to the, the, the grant. Officer, I guess you can call it, uh, for the federal grant that they're going for. It is a letter of support from the municipality required for the grant, so they asked for it to be submitted to them. Yeah, because I've seen them like this before. Mm -hmm. This was last year. Yeah. 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 Okay, for the discussion? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, although I do support this initiative and I do support the letter of support, I'm a little confused because just two weeks ago we passed a resolution that essentially banned one organization from pursuing any housing programs or projects and here we are granting it to another. So to me that makes us look very hypocritical if not biased in picking and choosing where we outright pass resolutions banning organizations from pursuing such housing initiatives and then turning around and supporting another one. So I just find the, I guess, council's ethics in question. Remember, uh, Councilor, that you are council? Go ahead, mm -hmm. uh, Councilor, that um, I would like to point out that the organization in question currently is currently in operation and is operating a center and this letter of support for uh, a grant to look at expanding their traditional uh, transitional housing. So it's not a new program, it's a, an expansion of what we currently have in the community. Council I have no problem disagreeing with anybody at the council. I think that's part of our job to disagree with one another. I think that's healthy. But when you call the question councillor's ethics, as opposed to you may have a different feeling, a different philosophy, it doesn't mean your ethics are unacceptable. So 
I find it a little difficult to go to questioning council's ethics. Okay, fair enough. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Six point three. Result of building permits forty seven twenty four and forty eight twenty four with a total estimated value of eighteen thousand two hundred and sixty two dollars be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven, seven point one. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor White. This uh, status of the, uh, the caretaker, which I think is a really important job for the cemetery. I'm uh, working on a job description for that, and then there'd be a negotiation with uh, the union because it'd be a union position. And then if we can come to an agreement on a wage, then it will be presented to council as a budget line item for approval or to not approve it. Do you have to negotiate with the RM of uh, uh, Southern West also in this process? Not for this one, no, because it's okay. 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 Further discussion? Councilor Boychuk. Just a quick update. Like, I've noticed the lagoon lately very prominent and I know probably the wind was not going in the right direction but it was quite strong and I don't recall it being like that at this time of the year like is it due for treatment like are the EMF 1000s in there uh, there's a new one that they're uh, they have a new unit so we're just working on the details on that so it's not in there right now um, it is stronger than normal for this time of year though because uh, <coughs> normally it's in the spring when it's a bit strong uh, we're just starting to discharge, so they just stir up something, oh, okay. possibly. Good. Uh, Council White. So two things entered my mind. One, why is it stronger? And two, is the equipment not doing the job? Uh, the equipment's not in there right now just because there's a new unit coming. Um, <coughs> and possibly with the discharge, if that is stirred it up a bit. Um, but yeah, normally it isn't that strong at this time. Usually it's in the spring. That's Did the other one break down? Is that why you ordered a new one? There's a new unit model. So why would you take the old one out before the new one was here? Uh, well, they're just working on this new one because the old one, uh, it wasn't like they've updated to the new one. Okay. So we've got to get the new one in there. Councilor. Oh, no, it's answered. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? carried 7.2 resolve the August 2024 Swan River Handy Transit Van report be received moved by Councilor Medwood seconded by Councilor Boychuk discussion all in favor opposed it's carried 7.3 uh, see uh, council reports to begin with. I'll start with Councillor White. Been relatively busy. Uh, I had uh, the privilege of sitting in uh, with uh, Councillor Morio and the Reeve of uh, Reeve Gate, Reeve Beerman, and uh, Brad from uh, Birch River. And we met with uh, Trina Slate, the uh, CEO of Prairie Mountain Health, and Adrian Fung, who was a medical doctor here uh, one time. And I had a really good feeling with the whole meeting in that uh, Dr. Fung was an associate chief medical officer for Shared Health. Close? Chief medical officer for Prairie Mountain Health. Chief medical officer. He used to be associate chief. You got to prove it. He speaks so highly of the Swan River Valley, the things that we as a valley have done with other uh, municipal entities, and he's working hard trying to make a handful of things happen. For example, one option to have a rural interest group, which is the younger students to come up here for, it will be 30, 40, who knows how many, and we would host them. 
He also uh, expressed a concern about the lack of air service and could they help out in that world. And uh, the issue that I liked, uh, they've promised to have quarterly meetings with the medical service team now, and we haven't had any organized, questionably, uh, forever. So uh, we would adamant that we can work with them and they can work with us. We like that which they do, and they like that which uh, we do, but uh, I felt we were in isolation, so that, that, that went really well, so I was pleased uh, with that, uh, that meeting. Then I had an immigration service meeting uh, recently, and I can't say enough about those people. Uh, they've got the 26 new clients working for uh, medical health boards. They've got 13 new clients have their uh, permanent residency application. Nine new clients have already been approved for permanent residency. And if you look at the contacts, there's, uh, there's uh, 1,500 contacts with people from all ethnic groups. And they bring to our community a culture that we don't have that hopefully will make us all better and hopefully they learn some of our positive cultural things too. So Immigrant Service is an entity in our community that I feel is just uh, blossoming. There's half a dozen different businesses in our town right now. There's a store in Benito. There's stores all over opening up with immigrant people, paying taxes, uh, helping our community, bringing, uh, bringing knowledge. So uh, I have a really good feeling about that committee, uh, Your Worship, so I, I have no problem staying on that one. Thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Edward. Uh, well, my meetings are starting to uh, get going again. I attended services as seniors this afternoon, Cal meeting uh, last week. And I am actually still waiting for a follow up on the financials from the September 3rd meeting to hear back on why our CAO, Mayor, and Deputy Mayor lunches are being charged for town credit card when the travel policy states reimbursement should be done by a form and submitted. And they're also exceeding the $20 per person limit when the taxpayers, so when will the taxpayers be reimbursed for, reimbursed for those overages? Because as municipal leaders, we should be leading by example. So if we expect the staff and ratepayers to follow the rules, then we should be too. So if I can get an answer on that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Councilor Uh I attended a call meeting, uh, not too much to really report, but uh, CAO pool. Uh, there's going to be, uh, we'll see, coming up uh, on what jobs you've done and not done this year, so we'll be discussing that later in, in the month. But I uh, have more to say at uh, Member Privilege Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, just a couple of meetings with the community of the whole meeting last Tuesday. Uh, Councilor White uh, mentioned about the medical stakeholder uh, meeting that we had with Prairie Mountain Health, um, where, as he had stated, they committed to meeting with us every quarter in regarding to the recruitment of uh, physicians and professions um, in our area and in the region as a whole. Um, as it was indicated uh, clearly throughout our meeting with them that uh, communication between the province, Prairie Mountain Health, and ourselves, and all, and all recruiters is severely lacking, um, where it seems like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing, and sort of working in silos uh, versus uh, one of the examples that they gave is that the province uh, has a delegation out in the UK right now looking uh, for physicians, and they're reached out uh, to, P the province has reached out to PMH at two, three days before the departure, on material to showcase Swan River to recruit physicians to our community, but no one from the community that's the experts uh, knew anything about it. <laughs> so, um, personally, I think there was a little bit of egg on some face up there uh, on that, and who uh, bid on that uh, three gate for actually clearly making that point across to them that uh, they need to step up their game and see if they're going to. Uh, look for material to advertise and promote various communities in their, in their region that they need to actually talk to the communities and not pull stock images and verbiage off an internet on things like that. So, um, And then after that meeting we had a medical services uh, uh, meeting with uh, the four municipalities um, and one of the biggest discussions that we uh, will have to ch take on um, as a challenge for the committee as a whole is the philosophical um, 
line as to where we go with uh, incentives on recruiting uh, professions and uh, physicians here. Um, is it return of services uh, agreements or tuition subsidies, all that stuff, so which creates some very fine line and um, some big debate. So that's going to be a discussion that has to be ironed out down the road as to how in depth uh, incentives and whatnot are brought forward to attract physicians and professions to the, the valley. So that's all I have. Just a, a comment on that, sir. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I was at that meeting. Uh, regardless, I think the committee decided also to, to give a small stipend to the two young ladies who have taken the CT scan training. We did that all on their own with no help from PMH, which is disturbing to me. But uh, we found some money in our budget where we're going to uh, try to give them a little bit up front, and after two years, we'll give them some money. Uh, the standard return of service agreement. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Orchuk. Uh, so I had to pass on my regrets for the September 10th cow. I was out of town for a workshop. Um, we've been having uh, weekly meetings with the Legacy Committee, uh, getting information and things together to apply for a very important and potentially impactful grant. Uh, those weekly uh, meetings plan to continue until the application is completed and submitted, which I think we're discussing a little later on. Um, after that, we've also um, going, we're going to be requesting to be added to the agenda for the G4 and G8 meetings so that we can update um, the Valley on a whole uh, with regards to that project. There's there's not a whole lot to, to update, but um, just to try and keep everybody uh, in the loop and with the same knowledge as everyone else. Uh, also, after that is complete, we're, we're looking at doing a public information night, um, possibly like consultation and, and discussion uh, night is, is also being planned or, or thought to. Um, and then I guess I just want to speak to um, Councillor Medwitt's um, question regarding the uh, lunches. And I'm, I'm wondering now, I can't remember the exact wording that was used, but I believe it was frivolous and vexatious um, after I don't even know how many thousands of tax paying dollars were used regarding review for uh, legal fees spent. Um, and I'm just wondering if that was in the budget or accounted for or where those things are coming from or have we had to take those away from other areas where we had taxpayers funds allocated. So we're not just talking four dollars here, we're talking thousands of dollars just to bring some perspective to some of this. So uh, it's very troublesome that only one thing is being seen and not everything and it's just a reminder that there's a lot of things way on here and there should be some perspective, some self-reflection sometimes as well. Uh, that's it. Good, okay. Councillor Paul. Okay, so we've had a few meetings with the library. Um, we've uh, actually had a really great staffing meeting the other day with both, both Benito and Swan River. It was really good to have them both together and come together and just discuss some of the things that are going on. Both their place and both their um, libraries. Um, good, to, good for them to also get together like that because they kind of get an idea of what each other is doing, you know, um, when we don't have specifically a staff going out there all the time. Uh, we have hired new staff at the library. It's been, it was working out really get well, along with our new li or librarian. She's doing an amazing job, and I'm really, really picking up the pace and and picking up things very fast. Um, lots of new things going on there with um, teen and reading club, board games, and, and just lots of new ideas. So that's going to be great. Uh, with the library, Doc Bev Cullen and Donna Jean have also volunteered, and they are looking after the Scooptoberfest for this coming year in October. Uh, there'll be more details on that coming up, but um, I guess a, a great big thank you to uh, CFO Ganita as well in regards to his diligence in pursuing the claim regarding our flood claim. Um, I know we stalled, it was stalled for a long time and I know he was really pursuant on them to get this cleared up and he did. Um, so we just really want to say a huge thank you to him for that. Um, the RISE meeting, we have a RISE meeting plan that's coming up next, next month I believe. Yeah. Um, I guess the only other thing in regards to um, our discussion earlier with Councilor Medwood is 
I guess C I had mentioned before with CFO Ganita as well. Um, I would like an I would like an explanation of the indemnities that have been claimed. I think that should be public knowledge to uh, our town as well of the, all the indemnities that have been claimed by our council, um, and it should become public knowledge as well. So I think that that's that's all I have. Question: Who's the new uh, library? Dodie. Dodie. Uh, Dodie, because you asked me your last. Been there five minutes ago. Yeah. Got right. live. Um, yeah, she she was actually she's been working for the um, for the library for quite some years. Well, you can tell me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Okay, that's good. All right, for me um, with um, uh, reports, uh, not much more than what everybody else has report as far as you know, the cow meeting and all that. But um, the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation did meet last night uh, after. Uh, a little bit break since June. Uh, we did uh, approve our June to August uh, financials and uh, the foundation is still running fairly well. Uh, we do receive a small amount of donations that come in and, and help the facility purchase merchandise that is not necessarily covered by, uh, say, uh, uh, current Mountain Health or if it's shared health. So um, there is uh, still some uh, equipment that we did uh, commit to and uh, still waiting for, but uh, uh, overall the foundation is, is still doing quite well. Uh, we will be paying the, the portion of our um, monies, I guess, to the CT scan in the next little bit. Uh, and we did uh, receive a check that will go back to the, uh, the foundation or to the, uh, the doctor or the medical recruitment fund as far as the interest that was accrued uh, while the, the money was sitting in trust with the town of Swan River as well. Uh, but overall, yeah, the, the foundation is doing uh, fairly well, but we're still looking for more donations, obviously, to keep uh, it going and, and, and fulfilling all the needs that uh, we need to do for our facilities from Benito to Swan River. And, and, I, and I also wanted to make a little comment about, I think that uh, Councilor Medwood had brought up about, uh, I think it was the $64 and some cent uh, uh, food charge. Um, Councillor Mr. Poole will, will comment on that, but um, I, I don't know if it falls under the indemnity rules as far as the, the council uh, goes, but uh, what is broken down is $21.50. I'd be more than glad to pay $1.50, whatever it is, but I can tell you also as far as Councillor uh, Powell has uh, stated that uh, as far as meeting claims and, uh, and, and all that that happened in the last six months or 14 years. There's several that I've never claimed for my entire time. So I will let that be what it is. Uh, then with uh, CEO uh, Poole, in your report. Uh, yeah, just to start off, I have my written report for council to review. I'll take any questions, but uh, just for to highlight the MMA conference that the that the association put on in Winnipeg. It's just a, a top-notch conference. Uh, all the all CFOs, CAOs go, administrative staff, it was, your staff it was well attended. Uh, so I, I do have some highlights for you in my report, but uh, the commitment of the town to allow its employees to go to those is invaluable for the networking and uh, the meetings that we have, sharing of the solutions that uh, to the issues that we all seem to have. <coughs> Uh, managers are working on the capital review for 24, so expect that on the 24th Cal. Uh, the accommodation tax, I do have a handout from the, uh, the local hotels uh, that did not make the agenda. I just received it uh, a few hours ago. Uh, in, in terms of the animal control bylaw, we are looking to send out the public survey, so we'll a refresh council on what that is to give you an idea of the questions that are going out, but uh, just to move that bylaw along. And we'll be working with Deputy Mayor uh, Morio on the incentive plan bylaw uh, once that first reading is passed. <coughs> and just to note, we're getting several resumes for the open clerical staff position. Uh, and just some things for council to write down. We are looking for uh, yes or no on whether council wants to attend the gala at the AM conference in November. Uh, and just a reminder to, to mark in your calendars October 7th for the G4, G8 meeting and any agenda items to, to send to me prior to September 30th. 
And I just wanted to mention that uh, Vice President Chartrand came into Swan. We had a really good meeting uh, with the Northwest Media Council. Uh, she wants to get those connections back and just really enjoy meeting with her. But uh, she wants to continue uh, the good relationship she has with the town. And I won't get into too many specifics, but I'm sure she'll be on our agendas in the coming future. Twenty to mention. Actually, I wanted to go further a little bit on that too, but uh, uh, Vice President uh, Chartrand is always a pleasure to meet with, and, and we had a really good uh, sidebar uh, last week on a lot of different topics to do with the town and, and some of the things, the resolu resolutions that we had with harm reduction and also with, uh, with housing or, or homeless uh, accommodations and all that. And she had a lot of uh, ideas that she wants to bring forward, and she will have an opportunity to do so, I believe, at one of the future meetings at some point in time that she'll be invited to attend, because I think that she does have uh, some good ideas, and uh, and she they are also testing some of those ideas in Dauphin as we speak right now, so um, she's very much uh, interested in, in having that discussion. So, uh, yeah, really good discussion with her and some other plans that she has and what she's looking at as far as the whole organization and what their investments are in the town of Swan River. So, like I said, always a pleasure to have uh, Mr. Chartrand here with us in Swan River. So, with that, uh, we will move on to... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, under your community safety and well-being pilot project, we're... Are we still putting out communications to the public on the survey, on social media and in the paper? Uh, yeah, until the end of September. Okay. And that's actually moved forward a bit too because we're also work, uh, currently working on scheduling um, uh, focus groups with frontline workers, business community, and other entities in addition to the survey. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Moving on to 10, 10.1. Did you have something? No? Okay. Resolve, resolve the accounts as follows. We hereby approve for payments. General accounts checks number 31985 to number 32051, totaling $100,508.50 is listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5487 to number 5490, totally 112,682 and 82 cents, as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $5,440 and 45 cents, as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. Under Schedule C, if I can get an explanation for September 4th, uh, Northwest Regional Library Insurance Claim, and then September 12th, uh, Global Star Canada Satellite Company. And then CFO Kanita, if you can just provide me with your check explanations for Schedule A, because otherwise I have a ton of questions for that one. Okay, anybody else? Councilor Boy, Bob, sorry. Uh, 0031997, Municipality of Minnetonka, Bozeman. What, what was the number? 31997. Okay. You, have, uh, you know it? I don't know it offhand. Oh, okay. I'm assuming you're repeating. I probably have it in here, so I could probably tell you when I sign these later. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2. Resolve financial statements for the eight months ending August 31st, 2024, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Boycha, seconded by Deputy Mayor Morio. Discussion, Deputy Mayor Morio. Uh, a couple of questions uh, for CFO Ganita. Uh, under resource conservation and industrial development heading under, um, there's a expense for $83,762 under industrial development that was not budgeted for. Uh, can 
someone from administration enlighten us what that was for? Yeah. CFO Ganita, do you know what that might be? This thing's not working. Oh, can you not hear me? Because the blue light's not on. Oh, can you push it? Can you push it again? Well, the red light comes on yeah. for mute, but oh, not I blue for active. Are you able to get into that, uh, Seattle? I guess I can ask them and then if they get that back online or can Yeah. Uh, okay. So what is your second? Uh, second question is what's the since we're at uh, seventy five percent or three quarters through the fiscal year, what's our financial look, outlook look like? Um, are we on track for budget? Um, or are we looking at a surplus or a deficit? And mm -hmm. and then uh, where are we at with uh, tax payments of what percentage? of people that have paid their taxes on time at the end of September. So uh, see if Okanita can get that to us. It's still not working. Because um, I know he's trying to respond, but yeah, he is. our speaker's not working here. So. Okay. so will you have those questions? I have those. I can respond, yeah. Okay, uh, Councillor Vodja. I just noticed, like, on the bottom of page four, the transfers from reserves we had budgeted 238 365 but the actual is 608 709 11 so there's it's a 255.4 percent just wondering what that, that additional one is there and then on page eight um, wages and benefit here we had budgeted 405 650 and I believe that was for it's looks like just the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center I, I'm like wondering if that's a, if that seems pretty high but we're only at 256 so we're well below but I was just wondering if that was really the the wages and benefits uh, allotted to that um, and a little lower down on there, the property taxes said budgeted fifteen hundred. Actual was forty thousand six hundred and thirteen forty five. So we're twenty seven oh seven percent. So just wondering what the big change there was. Yeah. And page nine on the soccer pitches, there was no fees collected. Just wondering if we're not charging or maybe we have a different. Uh, thing going with uh, soccer than we do for baseball and hockey. Dr. Paulson, do you want to comment on that at all, or is that just fees that are not turned over yet? It could be. We might not. Uh, we might be behind on our invoicing. Uh, I'd have to look because we didn't up those last year, so they should be the same. Okay. We might just be behind on invoicing. Oh, page 11, it was just a little thing, and I don't know if we can change it or how we need to go about changing it, but the fire truck reserve fund, if we can change that to fire hall reserve fund for those fees, I think we had agreed that we'd be yeah. still contributing to that for future, should that come uh, a need, but just to be clarifying going forward future yeah. um, to update that, if it's an easy edit or if we have to make a resolution, let me know and, and we can do that. And that's everything. Okay, so you have all those noted then? I have all of those noted. Good for the council for asking questions on the financials. Yes. Yeah. Really uh, Director Klaus, I mean, you'll uh, take that away as well then? Yeah, I will. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, further discussion then? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried.
10.3, whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that a municipality may impose a supplementary, ta supplementary taxes and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on September the 10th, 11th, and 13th to uh, be made to the 2024 property and business tax rules with the resulting increases totaling $12,251.70 and the resulting reductions totaling $1,239.20. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11, 11.1. Resolve the bylaw 11 2023 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish an accommodation tax be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, Councillor Medwood. I still have issues and concerns with it pertaining to the lack of fairness between. Uh, enforcement with uh, hoteliers and short-term rentals. Uh, there's also the um, sorry, just one second. Uh, the still holds the recreation and active living, which the hoteliers have requested that be removed. Uh, they also are looking for. I agree with uh, clear direction towards tourism and economic development uh, versus uh, the wording that is kind of extremely vague there as to what it'll be for. It also excludes a committee um, between council and accommodation businesses to uh, direct and decide how the funds will be, uh, I guess, distributed or used towards. Uh, these are just a few of my oppositions. I see we, at some point today, received the legal feedback regarding it, so I will need to revise my uh, opposition to account for that, which I didn't see until tonight when I arrived here. That's it? Uh, yeah, and I still feel that the section um, that was removed, it would have been section 5F, every accommodation which is supplied and operated by employers for their employees. I don't feel that should be removed because the original purpose and intent of the accommodation tax from the beginning was not to have an impact on our local residents. It was supposed to be something that was collected 100% from people outside of the community. But when we're taxing individuals that are here to work, that just means that cost is going to be transferred on to whomever has hired their services or contracted their services. So it will actually have a direct impact to our local ratepayers. For the discussion? Go ahead. I just wanted to, to commend Ferris Law. We asked them six days ago to do a review on our proposed bylaw and they, they made it a priority and got it done for us on time. So they, they didn't know if they were able to do it, but they, they put the town of Swan River in their priorities and, and got it done for us. So just a accommodation to Ferris Law. Yeah. Any further discussion? Councillor Boychuk. Um, I also was uh, very happy with all the recommendations that was put in by Ferris Law. Um, the review, I think the wording in it clarifies it and it is very understandable in layman's terms. I, I do note that there is the uh, inclusion of the meetings with the uh, hoteliers regarding um, the purpose of gaining information on process collection, past current and planned expenditures of the accommodation tax, so that is included in there. Um, I did review it prior to uh, the meeting. Um, as far as uh, fairness between the short-term rentals and the hoteliers, 
this again is something that we've been very open and transparent about that as soon as there is changes to the provincial law uh, that we will be implementing those to include that to have that transparency and fairness between those two different business types for this tax um, we have not said we would not be doing that um, and what else was there I believe that was the one I guess um, to speak to it coming back to the taxpayers this has been around I believe I want to say for 40 years I have the exact year in my uh, notes at home and um, Quite frankly, I believe it's been tried to be put through in 2011 and 2017 for our community and I believe that the benefits of implementing this tax um, are going to far outweigh um, anything detrimental. Your time has expired. Thanks. Any further discussion? Okay. okay. Uh, sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Bob. I don't know if it's so much to do with the taxes, just reading the letter from Super 8 there, and it seems to be some of their issues that they've stated here, some of the problems is, where is COPP in all of this? Now, this looks like something that can be handled by C I just don't see them. Are they still out there, or where are they? That's, oh, not, are they? that's not a question of this uh, uh, resolution at the time. You'll have your opportunity to ask that at any other time, but not during oh, this resolution right now. Let me know when it's good. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion on the resolution or the bylaw, I should say? Okay, uh, I will ask for a recorded vote uh, for the third reading. All in favor? Opposed? This uh, bylaw has been passed. 11.2 Resolve the bylaw number 17, 2024, being a bylaw of the town of Swinover. To establish a development incentive plan, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion. Councillor Medley. I'm just sort of curious, and I didn't notice this uh, last night when I was reviewing the agenda. When was it added? Uh, this this was directed to be added from Council of the Cal, but I did not get it up until I got to the office this morning. Right. And this is opening the the, uh, the, the the ability to have conversation of the uh, bylaw. I realize that, but I'm under the understanding that the agenda is basically finalized Friday, and any additions to it have to come forward in the meeting at the time of the meeting. So I'm just wondering what the exception was for this one. To I think that CEO Pollock mentioned that that was ad asked during the cow meeting, and he didn't actually get it added to it. Go ahead. Uh, I understand the question, but that question should be brought up when we were adopting the agenda, not at the line item. I just noticed it right now when we moved on to it. I'm not going to get into debate. The agenda has been adopted and approved by council. Okay. So further discussion. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, one, I think it's very positive that we uh, reach out to our business community. Anything that will enhance or bring people to our town, and I would say from cultural perspectives as much as any, but obviously economic perspectives where we've been living in with other cultures. And, uh, and if we can create uh, an incentive plan where people will want to build and stay here, and in the short term we may not be getting the monies we'd like to have, but in the long term we'll get a lot of money. So I think it's a fantastic concept. Okay, thank you. Um, um, all, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, um, question on the, um, did we happen to change the order uh, where members' privilege was supposed to be uh, before um, camera? We were since we passed the procedures, yeah. That's correct. So I will change that right now and I'll let you know. Go ahead. Uh, two things. One, I have a notice of motion, and two, would this not have also had to have been done at the uh, adopting agree. of the agenda? I do agree. So this will have to remain as it is until after our, to our next uh, meeting. So you're, don't get too far ahead because I haven't got to number 12 yet. 
but uh, we will leave that as it is and members privilege will be uh, put in the proper order uh, at the time of uh, the uh, next meeting. Okay. Uh, so then now we'll go on to 12 and notice motion. Go ahead. Um, I would like to raise a motion to amend resolution number 2024-0299 confirming the order to demolish 346 6th Avenue South. Okay. Do you have a secondary? What was that address again? Say that again. It's to amend the resolution of 2024-0299 confirming the order to demolish 346 6th Avenue South. Second, it's just providing motion. Oh, that's true. That's I'm sorry. That is right. So that is a, a notice of motion for that to come up at our next uh, meeting. Thank you. Any other? Okay. So then, uh, 13. Result of pursuits sections 152 and 3 of the municipal act. Council going to the committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed is the arena project and human resources. Moved by. Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. We're on camera. All right, so we're on camera. Uh, 15 items arising out of camera. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor Moyo. Just before I move that, uh, that resolution that was getting drafted there, Mr. Poole, you said that uh, they estimated between 50 and 60 hours. 40 and 60. Between 40 and 60? Okay. Um, and they would charge on an hourly basis? Uh, no, he said he told me that he's going to give me it at cost, so we should get a number. Okay. He did state, like we told him, that uh, like obviously this is a single workload. Once the application's in, there's no obligation at all, but they would like to consider be considered for uh, engineering practices, any RFPs that come right. with a chance I, I, to meet. I realize that I'm just going here, like for the draft resolution here, like um, to put like to a maximum of 60 hours. So or before we get a yeah, debate so. of the resolution, we should read the resolution, and then if you want to make or if you want to make some amendments to it before we. That's what I was to get. Okay, that's, that's what you okay. okay. trying to just so get here. Okay, because okay. I just seen it here and I didn't know if anybody. Yeah. So, if you want to reword your resolutions, it is your resolution. Right. Okay, fair enough. You just write it in there. After pink? Pink? Uh, or two. no? At the end of the October 16th to a maximum of 60 hours. Should we give them a little buffer? If they say 40 to 60, and they need 63, we're going to miss. I don't want to give a blank check, but I hope I'll put the... Yeah, uh, that's cool. If, if they told you that, that's what they told you. If it's going to be more, they can come back and we can make an amendment. Yeah. Fair. So With a number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like if they have a more exact number for the next, like October 2nd, you can always make an amendment. Okay. So let me know when you have that done. Okay, refresh. Okay. All right, 15.1. Resolve the town of Swan River engage Johnson Cool Controls Incorporated specific to assist the town of Swan River's application to the Green Canada Green and Inclusive Community Buildings Grant due October the 16th, 2024, to a maximum of 60 hours of work. Moved by Deputy Mayor Morio, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion, any further? Uh, Councillor Medwood. I still have concerns about fiscal responsibility in regards to approving a resolution to finance something when we don't actually have a dollar value to put to it. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Members privilege. <coughs> Councillor Baldwin. Mm. Oh, wait. 
really doesn't count for anything when there's nobody watching. Well, they're mm -hmm. listening to you out there, and, and, and people that words anyway. watch this video again. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's my fault. It's still, I, uh, that, it still counts. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, had a chance to go on a tour of a small town near Brandon, Mendoza, with an ex CAO there, not ex, they're retired. So he took me around the town, baby showed me some of their developments and stuff. Like interesting, it was an interesting to see the perspective of another CAO in the, in the city, in the, or the city, small town. So what, uh, they have their issues too also. So just something that You're struck me. What's that? You're not <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, the veterans flags are in Mr. Harvey's office. They'll be going up shortly, I would imagine. There is some towns that leave them up year-round, so maybe something to think about, but uh, I don't know how many we have or whatever, but I think that's a, on Veterans Way and maybe to the Legion Hall or something, something we could have a look at, I don't know how many there is. But, yeah, I kind of like that idea. Yeah, so, and there's a big thank you from Ms. Shirley Kotick on uh, the resolution that was passed, and hopefully that helps her in her endeavor to get that subdivision done. So, okay, that's it. Um, well, just to mention that our actual code of conduct bylaw covers actually all the fees and expenses for matters pertaining to code of conduct, and I'm more than happy to release my complaint to the public upon uh, council's approval. Uh, indemnities, if there's a different way in which a mayor, CAO, and deputy mayor can purchase lunches that doesn't apply to our meal reimbursement, then simply the respectful thing to do is answer that in my emails when I inquire about it, rather than leaving it open on it and not addressed. Um, but rules are rules. So if we expect our ratepayers, we just passed a resolution coming out of in-camera last meeting that rules are rules. In, we were not willing to make an exception, and it was very clear by council that rules are rules. So rules are rules, including for us. And integrity speaks to council members demonstrating strong ethical principles. So if we're not willing to follow the rules, how can we really expect that of our staff and or ratepayers? Council White. Uh, a paid political advertisement. Uh, Swung down the outdoors, dinner is November 9th. <laughs> Somebody's got to lighten it up. We spent $130,000 in the Swan River Valley in the last two and a half years. Wow. So uh, that money comes to all our, all our constituents. Uh, Monday, the September the 30th, is far away. The elders, I'm sorry, you talk about it. That's kidding. And, and the question about indemnity is if we don't eat the food, we can't bill for it, can we? <laughs> It says I can have twenty dollars for lunch, but I don't have lunch. I don't want lunch. I probably shouldn't put a bill in for the twenty dollars if I didn't need it, because then I'm just taking money for nothing. That would be the ethical. What's the question? Well, if I if I stop for lunch and I'm allowed twenty dollars for lunch, but I don't want to eat today, right? So I don't eat it. So, but if I bill twenty bucks and I didn't have the lunch, that would be very ethical to me, because I'm taking twenty bucks for nothing. That's right. Should not Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, oh, gosh, I have these go. tickets here <laughs> that somebody sewered me to sell for the library. I'm just kidding, I'm taking Tanya's <laughs> thunder away. But uh, yeah, the Northwest Regional yeah, Library has a 50 50 draw going. So, mm -hmm. anybody wants some tickets, see Tanya or myself for tickets. Uh, also, like to mention that the uh, Staff Peters home opener is this Friday, I believe, and the Northern, they have a new name. It's the yeah. Path. Northern or Knights oh. or something. I can't oh, they've all changed their name? Yeah. yeah. They're out of the pond now, not to open the okay. They're okay. here traveling down to take on our, hopefully, some local Swan Valley San Peter players. We'll mm -hmm. see how that goes for the kids. And uh, yeah, come on out and enjoy this arena while we have it. And the food. Yeah, and food. <laughs> Tip and Memorial. Um, not really much news this tomorrow. I'll be attending the um, UH meeting, board meeting, along with the strategic planning session where I 
can highly anticipate that our resolutions regarding harm reduction will be discussed. So if anything interesting pops out of that, I will inform you guys. I have a phone call with somebody from... Uh, yes, I see she reached out to you and stuff yeah. like that. I, I told her I'd like to her tomorrow morning, so that's what my so plan is. Yes, so, so part of that oh. was uh, um, CEO was, had emailed and was wondering if uh, council would be interested in a P, uh, PMH coming, giving a reference or a presentation regarding harm reduction. And I haven't responded to that yet. I'll wait there and I will give her a copy of the uh, presentation we had by PMH staff uh, regarding harm reduction. And, be asking that along with the board chair if this is the presentation that they would like repeated to the council. But I think the town has uh, uh, expressed some views on already. So I'll leave that at that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Powell. Yeah, I guess pretty much everything there's also um, another hockey game, isn't the U15, right? Are playing Parkland or just Saturday at Saturday. 6 and Sunday at 9. I yeah. Who they're playing. So they'll be here as well. So there's, there's a few local kids on there too as well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the other, we've got lots of things happening at the Friendship Center. We've got lots of new, um, for kids, we've got lots of programs happening. Everything starts in October. So keep an eye out for the website because there's so many programs going to be happening. And September 30th, of course, is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. So um, we will be uh, again walking down down Main Street again with that. So um, please try to join us for that. Um, we'll have our refreshments and stuff. It, it's a it's a holiday now, so it will be it, we won't be celebrating it with lunches and stuff like that. But we will be have snacks and stuff like that. Yeah. So try to make sure you stop in it and maybe say something. Ten a.m. 10 a.m. Is that a match? 10.30. Yes, that resonates. Okay. All right, is that everybody? Yeah, okay. Great. Uh, for me, uh, first of all, um, you know what? Uh, last week I was taking one of my daily walks in, in the park and I had to run across these guys playing cricket. And I thought, what the heck is this? And I stopped and watched them. Yeah, they're playing cricket. And I thought, man, this is the first time I've ever seen cricket. So. After they were done, you know, playing, I chatted with them for a little while. And they told me that they were coming down to the park more often, and and they were going to have one of their big games on Sunday night, and they uh, were able to do that under the lights. So I did that as a favor for them, and I paid for the lights for them to be uh, stars, I guess, in the community. And lots of people came out and watched, and I got to learn a little bit more about cricket and, and the game and, and the rules and how. The, the, the runs and scores and strikes and all that kind of those little strikes, but anyway, it's it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> and also, just for everybody to know, the very first cricket game, um, competitive cricket game that was ever played was between Canada and the United States yeah. many many moons ago. So, anyways, it was kind of fun. So, I uh, if you ever get a chance to go out and watch them, uh, uh, do so. I also want to say congratulations to Chief Nelson Jedi for receiving the coronation medal and commemoration of this, His Majesty's coronation and uh, for the Chief's uh, valuable contributions to the country and to his community. So congratulations to Chief Jedi on that uh, very nice uh, uh, medal of uh, recognition. Uh, and also, lastly, just to say to all our Producers out there, safe and good harvest for them all, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Poole. Uh, just one item of business. I'm going to send this around. It's for the sale of our municipal developer's property. I need each and every councillor to sign. Our law office does. Uh, other than that, I guess because it's public, I wanted to just commend, uh, again, going back to my MMA conference, I forgot to mention uh, the, the relationship between the AMM and the MMA, and I believe Cam Blight needs to be recommended for getting those two, and Dwayne Nickel, the president yeah, of the sure. MMA, for getting those two associations together. We work really well together, and we've been able to, to contact the province 
on some pretty big municipal issues between the administrators and the elected officials of both associations. So I wanted to say that. Yeah, I, I agree. And you know what? What a valuable per person, Mr. Nickel, has been on the board for the AMM. I understand there's a new person that will be sitting there at my next meeting and yeah. on in October. Uh, who is that person going to be? Uh, Grady, he's the CAO of Carberry. Carberry, yeah. Okay. Great. So we look forward to uh, meeting the new representative. But you're right, and, and uh, you know, uh, we're going to miss his valuable input on, on the board. But I'm looking forward to listening to this uh, as a new person as well. I want to also I miss something in my report, and that is that uh, I ever since our uh, resolutions on harm reduction and the uh, CMHA uh, uh, resolutions were passed. I've had a lot of discussion with uh, our good friend uh, of the Premier's office, uh, Mr. Kelly, as well as Minister Smith's office, uh, and some uh, people that are there, the, the Chief of Staff, and also uh, with the, uh, I don't know what his position is, but another person that works out of the Premier's office that they're trying to figure out, you know, to, to, uh, settle this down, so to speak, I guess, and to uh, come up with some uh, ideas and solutions on what we're dealing with here. So there is a lot of stuff going on in the background that we don't see. I don't even know the agencies and all the ministers and all that have been talking about some of this stuff. But uh, but anyway, this is all kind of ongoing and we're talking about it and uh, hopefully we can resolve some of these issues. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, I think it's important, uh, October, October 4 and 5, it's our Indian, uh, uh, apprentice that I can use that word for. East. <laughs> so the Indian community is having their celebration of Rati, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. I think it's on both days, the 4th and 5th. He says, don't come early because Indian people never come on time. I'm not sure what that's about. So uh, they'll have their, cult, their dads, their traditional food. They'll teach some of us how to dance. They didn't teach me very well, but... It's, it's a good evening and it's nice to come out and support that this huge segment of our society right now. It's October a lot of fun. It's a lot Lots of fun. fun. So Sorry, yeah, sorry just one else. more thing I forgot to say is that the basketball and the tennis and pickleball nets are all up at the Albert Shark Friends Friend Center and they're all ready to go and they are for use for everybody in any way. Councilors of Okay, and, and lastly, maybe for me to remind everybody to go get their uh, disc uh, golf, uh, th uh, whatever they're called, frisbees, and uh, start using the course down in the park. It's lots of fun. They actually took me out uh, last week and they got me to test throw a few. And man, those guys, they throw them and they go a long ways. So then I thought, oh, there's no way I could throw it that far. And sure enough, no, I don't think I even, I don't even think I even got a halfway so where that they did. But anyway, it's lots of fun and, and get out there. I know that the arena has some, uh, some loner stuff to, uh, just to, to try the game. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So give it a, give it a whirl anyway. So with that, resolved that this regular meeting the uh, council be now adjourned at 9:04 p.m. Moved by uh, Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor Bobbick. All in favor? It's, uh, it's carried.